It's your girl Young Africana and in today's video I'm going to show you step by step on how to install an already worn wig from start to finish. So if you guys want to see how I achieve this look and how to do this as a beginner then keep on watching. Now before we start this video go ahead and take a minute to pause and screenshot this. This is all the things that I use in the video and also go ahead and subscribe to your girl and like this video if you're already feeling it. Step one is the ball cap method. I am using an HD wig cap. As you guys can see the HD wig cap is super durable but also really thin. The thinner it is the more undetectable it will be underneath your lace. So on to prepping my edges. As you guys can see I have 4C textured hair and you just want to make sure that it is super flat so that there are no hairs in the way of when we are actually gelling down our wig cap. So right now I'm going to go in sections and throughout this entire video I am going to be working in sections because that's how we ensure that we have the best work. I like to go in with my baby hair comb and my bolt hold look of gold. I like to use the brush part of my baby hair comb and brush back the hair and use my finger just to smooth it down. And I like to use my finger to hold it down in place and blow dry on warm air until it is nice and dry and one thing i really like about this product is that it dries extremely fast this is not your typical gel that will take about 30 minutes for it to dry this gel dries extremely fast you guys so not only is it perfect for your edges but it's also perfect for your wig cap so after i am done i am going to go ahead and place the wig cap on my head you want to make sure that you stretch out the wig cap nicely the more you stretch it out the more thinner it will be and less opaque that it will be and I like to go in with some shears and cut in small sections around my ear section this is just to help the wig cap to be flush against your ear how you know that you cut well is if the flap or the cut around is nice and flat against your ear and it doesn't actually bubble up or bounces back when you touch the air area Hopefully that made sense for you guys, but yes, I just like to cut in small little cut sections and then smooth out the air area. I don't like to cut too high up because I don't want the wig cap to expose my hair. The whole point of this wig cap method is to protect your hair from the actual glue. So you want to make sure that it is nicely securing your hair and your hair isn't sticking out. So now that that's done, I'm going to go in with my bold hold look at gold and I'm going to start off in the middle section first and I'm just going to go ahead and start outlining my hairline and you want to make sure that you get this product on your skin and your skin only. The only way that this is going to really stick is if it's mainly on your skin. You can get it a bit on your edges but you do want to make sure that you get it on your skin. And once I apply it in sections, I do like to use my finger just to smooth it out. You want to make sure that it is nice and flat so that when you blow dry it, it dries quickly and there are no bubbles or bumps in your wig cap. And again, just use your finger just to smear it out. And you want to make sure that you get around that air section and make sure that you glue around your air section just so that it is nice and flat and it doesn't start rising up once you cut off the excess lace. Now once that is done, I like to go in with my blow dryer on warm heat and I'm going to place my baby hair comb right at the air area because the air area tends to rise up. So I'm just using that comb as a placeholder just to make sure that the air area is dry and I let this entire thing air dry until it is nice and dry and you can tell once you feel it it is not tacky it is super hard you can tell when it is dry so on to cutting off the excess lace I like to cut in sections I like to cut near my temple areas first and my ears last the reason why I do this is because it is easier for me to cut off the excess lace when I cut in sections versus it just being one you know full-blown 
experience, I guess. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start up with my middle section first, brace up the excess lace up until where it is dry at and use my eyebrow razor just to cut against where it is gelled at. So I am just lifting it up gently up until where it is gelled at and I am just scraping my eyebrow razor against the gel and then cutting right against it so that there are no frayed ends on the perimeter of the wig cap. And you're gonna see what I'm talking about. Just doing this, just make sure that it is nice and clean and you don't have any pieces or fragments of the wig cap popping out and also interfering with the glue. This part is super crucial because it is your foundation literally and we're about to use our foundation this is my lancome tint idol foundation and i this is in the color 560 actually and i like to use a buffer brush and i like to go ahead and buff the foundation onto the rest of the wig cap first before i actually go onto the actual hairline and the reason why i do this is because i don't want to pack up too much foundation and cake up the entire hairline where it is harder for me to remove any of the oils from the actual foundation and you do want to make sure that your foundation in general is an oil free foundation this just makes sure that your lace will not be popping up after 11 minutes of you placing it down because the oils will cause your wig to not stick or adhere to the glue and this is the finished result when it comes to your bald cap this is how it should look I didn't do anything to the back I just let it sit there I don't sew it down or anything so go ahead and start removing any of the excess gel dirt oils that you have around your hairline I'm using a paper towel and my 91% alcohol just to remove it now on to prepping our skin I like to go in with my Erica J watermelon skin guard this will just help protect my skin from any irritants of the actual glue you want to make sure that you do this twice I went in with two layers and let each layer dry completely before I add the other one and this will just make sure that you don't break out or that um, your skin will get irritated and overall just help with the longevity of your actual install so this is the wig that I am working with this is an already cut wig or already used wig that I had as you guys can see the lace is cut this is not a brand new wig and if you guys want to see how I styled this wig I am dropping a video tomorrow on how I curl this hair and it's super beginner friendly so go ahead and check that out I will leave that link once I drop it somewhere in the video and also in the description box below so right now I went ahead and just placed my wig and positioned it in front of the actual wig cap. You want to make sure that your lace is positioned from ear to ear and it touches your ear to ear as well as covering the entire wig cap. So once we are done with that I rolled it back and we're going to go ahead and start in sections and this is what I like to call the base layer. Now what I mean by base layer is that I'm going to put most of the glue predominantly on the wig cap and a little bit on my skin now the reason why i do this is because i don't want to overestimate the amount of glue that i use and end up having to clean glue in front of the actual lace you want to make sure that if anything you can always add some glue to unglued lace and cleaning up actual glue so I like to go ahead and use my rat tail comb and smear out that glue and I'm doing two layers of this and let each layer dry clear until it's tacky in between and then I'm just gonna go ahead and place the wig um, in front of the glue and you want to make sure again that when you're doing this that your lace is covering your wig cap and it is in front of your wig cap so once I position it, then I go ahead and press that down and then now on to base layer number two. And then you're just going to keep on moving forward and forward until you get closer and closer to the hairline. And that is pretty much what I do to just make sure that I ensure that there is no glue that I need to clean up because it will get messy if you have glue in front of your lace and it was just it would not look flush at all, you guys. So this is very tedious. I am not going to lie to you guys. I started off with the middle section first. I always like to work with the middle first and then the sides last. So once that middle section is down intact, I am now gonna go ahead and do my first base layer onto the sides now. And again, two layers, let it dry in between 
until it is clear. You don't want to let it dry too long where it is not tacky anymore. Once it dries clear, you go ahead and place your next layer and then go ahead and place the lace into the wig so that it is nice and tacky. So I like to use my rat tail comb just to go ahead and smear out the glue so it is nice and even and also thin as well too. You just wanna make sure that there are no bubbles in your glue because it will not dry properly at all. So overall, I have worked in five sections. It will be one in the middle, two in the temple side, so that's three, and then two on the sideburn sides, which is five. So I work in five sections. This is really tedious, but if you want the best results, y'all, please take your time because installing an already worn wig is a lot more trickier than actually using a new wig to do an install. So once I have that base layered down, I just like to go ahead and lift up the lace and then use my metal part of the rat tail comb just to kind of outline the hairline. And once those layers are dried completely, after I go ahead and smear it down, I'm just going to go ahead and use my finger just to place the lace into the glue. And you're just going to keep on doing this until you pretty much have no lace that is left to glue down. And once I am done with that, I just like to go in and check in my work. This is actually a huge game changer. I'm using my nail scissors, which are like really small scissors, and I'm going up against my hairline and slightly just kind of pushing it up to see if there are any small flaps of unglued lace that needs to get cut off. And once that is done, I am now going to go in and do my melt method. So I like to call this the double melt method. Um, this is a little bit different from what I have done before. And I just go ahead and use my Fantasia spritz. I'm using my fingers to apply the spritz. So I like to uh, pour some of the spritz on like a bottle cap or something and use my fingers and press it in to my lace. And this will just make sure that um, it's not messy, it is onto the lace, and it is pressed down onto the lace. So I'm gonna go in with my elastic band and you can get an elastic band off of Amazon. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and let that sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. And this is our first melt. So once the first melt is done, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same process, applying the spritz around the hairline to melt it again. Now the second time that we do this melt, after the spritz, I am going to go in with my Nairobi setting lotion, and this is what really seals the deal, y'all. Like, it's not just the spritz that makes your lace melt, it is also the setting lotion, the foaming lotion. And you can get this foaming lotion from your local Sally's or your local beauty supply store. So once I am done with the spritz, I'm going in with my Nairobi setting lotion, and I am pressing that into the edges of my lace. And this would just help further the melt. Now once you're done, you do wanna move fast cause sometimes the Nairobi setting lotion will make your lace lift a little bit, but move fast. Once you're done with that, go ahead and place your elastic band and let that sit for about 20 minutes or until it's dry. And this is how it should look. Now, although it's better, it's still a little bit ashy. So to finish and seal the deal of this, I am going in with my lace tint and a makeup brush. And I'm just going to gently start applying some of my lace tint onto my lace or the edges of my lace until it blends in with my skin seamlessly. And the lace tint I like to use is the Amasleo Bay Smeared Lace Tint in the color Mocha. And as you can see, it's a huge difference from how it looked like before. 
And now I'm just gonna go ahead and do like a small little fake baby hair just to kind of swoop it into my lace. And I'm using the Nairobi setting lotion and then my baby hair comb, the comb part, and just kind of swoop that little front fake baby hair into place. And this is optional, you don't have to do this. And this is how everything should look. And this is how it looks like up close. Talk about a melted lace. And this is the finished result. I do have a makeup video coming out for this look as well. Stay posted for this holiday glam that will be posted on YouTube. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Click that bell to get notified when I post these videos. And I will catch you guys in the next video.